Perfect. And we'll just get started in a, I prefer today just to go into a Baddha Konasana for me personally. So that would mean bringing the soles of the feet together. But if this is a little bit uncomfortable, a little bit too open, you can either place blocks underneath the knees, or if you prefer, you can always cross the legs. Take really any kind of seated pose that feels good. We're just gonna start by setting the breath. So I'm going to encourage you to just start by taking some deep inhales and exhales. So on the inhale, just gently beginning to close the eyes. And just feel the breath start to cause the belly to expand. And on the exhale, let it all go, pulling the navel in towards the spine as the air releases. Inhale. And deeply exhale, letting it all go. And just start to culminate whatever your intention is for this class. If I were to offer you an intention, it would just be to really observe the body throughout this practice without any judgment. So let come what come, let go what go, and just see what remains. From whatever seated pose you're in, maybe just gently begin to drop the chin towards the chest. And on the inhale, bring the chin to the right shoulder, right ear to right shoulder. And exhale, release through center. Inhale, left ear to left shoulder. And exhale, releasing back through center. Beautiful. And just start to take those gentle rolls from side to side at your own pace using and matching the inhales with the exhales. And when you're ready, making your way back through center, we're just gonna take some gentle shoulder rolls on the inhale, bring the shoulders up towards the ears. And on the exhale, release them back down. Inhale, shoulders come up. And exhale, release. Again, just taking your shoulder rolls at your own pace. And if you started circling in one direction, start to circle in the opposite direction. Beautiful. When you're ready, stop your shoulder rolls. And from whatever seated position you're in, just gently begin to slowly walk the hands out in front of you. Coming into a fold hinging from the hip creases and just coming down as comfortable or as, as deeply as is comfortable. So maybe you're finding that your torso is quite high from the floor, but as long as you're still lengthening through the spine, that's all that matters. Beautiful, when you're ready, starting to walk the body all the way back up, torso comes to the legs. And we're just gonna come up onto the knees here. And you're gonna make your way into a supportive camel pose. So taking the hands to the lower back, right above the bottom, and just gently see how it feels to slowly drop the head, drop the chest backwards. Coming into a really gentle back bend. Take a deep inhale and on the exhale, start to pull the spine back up through neutral. Take the arms out in front of you, almost as if you're hugging a beach ball and just gently gaze towards the floor. So you're rounding the spine just a smidge, sort of counteracting that gentle back bend. Deep inhale and on the exhale, release. On the inhale, plant the left hand to the mat, reach the right leg out across the length of your mat and reach the right arm out in front of you. Just going into this really beautiful gate opening pose. 
Now you can just stay here, seeing how this feels as you crack open the right side body, or you can take some movement with the arm opening up to the shoulder in circular motions. Again, it's really your practice, so finding whatever feels good. I'm just facilitating the space, but you're guiding your own body. If you did take those shoulder movements, circling the arm in the other direction. Beautiful. If you've been moving the shoulder, maybe stop for a second. Maybe just see how it feels to lift up that right leg so that you find this beautiful line of energy, horizontal line out through the fingertips, through the right foot. You're gonna find that this is going to activate the glutes and the core. So just holding and breathing. And we're gonna take a crunch, bending the knee and bringing the elbow in towards it on the inhale and exhale release. Inhale, crunch the knee in towards the elbow. Exhale, release. Just three more. Inhale, crunch. Exhale, release. Inhale, crunch. And exhale, release. Just one more. Inhale, crunch. Exhale, release. Drop the foot down. Beautiful. Make your way back up onto the knees. This time we'll go in the opposite way, pressing the right palm down to the floor, taking the left leg long across your mat, reaching the left arm up. And just feeling opening in the left side body, really breathing into wherever you're feeling the stretch. And if it feels good, maybe circling the arm to open up through the shoulder. Again, just an option. If you circled in one direction, circling in the opposite direction. Beautiful. If you were circling, bring the arm back and we're gonna lift the left leg. So again, finding this nice horizontal line out through the left fingertips, through the left <laughs> sole of the foot. You may find one side is a little bit more difficult than the other, which is totally normal. Then we're gonna take those crunches. So bending the knee and the elbow, bringing them together and exhale, release back out. Inhale, crunch, exhale, release. Inhale, crunch, exhale, release. Inhale, crunching in, exhale, spreading out. And just one more, inhale, crunching in. And exhale, release, beautiful. Dropping the foot to the floor, making your way back on top of the knees. We're gonna make our way into tabletop. So wrists and uh, wrists underneath shoulders, knees underneath hips. We're just gonna come into some gentle cat-cows. So on the inhale, dropping the belly, lifting the tailbone and the gaze upwards as you broaden through the collarbones. Really shining the heart forwards. And exhale, tuck the chin, curl the spine. Making your way into your cat pose. Inhale, drop the belly. Bill bone peels up towards the sky. Gaze goes upwards. And exhale, curl the spine. Tucking the chin into the chest. And you just begin to start making these movements at your own pace. If it feels good in your cat cows, you can always incorporate a little bit of movement, maybe swiveling the hips, just seeing what feels right in your body. Maybe what parts of the body could use, just a little bit of extra movement today. And from wherever you are, making your way back through neutral, we're going to take a child's pose. So you're just going to drop the bottom down onto the heels, reaching the arms out in front of you. 
and planting your forehead or your third eye into the mat. And we're just going to begin to start to flow between our child's pose and maybe a cobra or an upward facing dog. So from your child's pose, just beginning to take the hips off of the heels, just ease your weight forward, all 10 toenails pressing into the mat, broadening through the collarbones, you're coming into this nice back bend. So either an upward facing dog, so you're quite high up. Or if you come into a cobra, you can come a little bit closer to the earth if your back just isn't feeling that open yet. Inhaling deeply and on the exhale, again, beginning to press the bottom back towards the heels into your child's pose. Deep exhale. On the inhale, making our way back into our cobra or up the facing dog, shifting the hips forward, pelvis forward onto the mat as you peel the chest upwards. And exhale, release the bottom back towards the heels. You just start to flow in between these two poses at your own pace. Just finding some gentle movement, some opening. And when you're ready, making your way back to a neutral tabletop with a flat spine. You want to press and spread through the fingers, press deeply into the knuckles, tuck the toes, point the tailbone up towards the sky, make your way into your first downward facing dog here. Now you can always take a gentle bend in the knees. Your heels do not have to be planted into the earth. It's simply where you're at, where your body is comfort wise. And maybe just walk the dog, taking a bend through each knee. On the inhale, we're going to press the right leg up to the sky into a three-leg dog. And on the exhale, we'll make our way into a low lunge, threading the foot in between the hands, dropping the left knee, and reaching the hands up towards the sky. Allow yourself to really sink deeply into that right hip. And if it feels good, we're going to make our way into Ardha Hamanalasana, which is our half split. So you can take blocks to either side of you if that feels more comfortable. Otherwise, taking fingertips to the floor, you're just gently going to begin to shift the hips back as you unbend that front knee, taking the toes to the sky with a really active, engaged foot here. And maybe just gently folding forward with a really straight spine. We want to pull the right hip back as we press the left hip forward. So basically just encouraging the squaring of the hips towards the short side of the mat. Now, if you're quite flexible, you could always take a full split. That is, of course, an option. Just making sure that you're being really safe, really careful, squaring the hips as much as possible. Take a deep inhale. And on the exhale, begin to bend back into that front knee. And just gently walk the front foot, the right foot out towards the outer edge of the mat. We're gonna make our way into lizard pose so you can be up on the hands here if this feels good for your hip opening. If you wanna go just a little bit deeper, you can always press the forearms down into the earth, maybe rocking from side to side. And just one more additional option, if you want to incorporate a little bit of a quad stretch, you can take that back leg, keeping the knee pressed into the mat, lift the foot up and reach back with the right arm. So take a hold of the left toes. And you can just slowly begin to pull the foot in closer to the body. That's gonna give you a nice quad stretch on the left leg as you gaze upwards or to the right side wall. But again, just taking whatever variation is most accessible to you today. If 
we did take a hold of the foot, releasing it down to the earth, taking the hands back to the center of the mat, pressing up, and we're gonna come into an easy twist. So tucking the left toes so that you're bringing the left knee off the floor and reaching the right hand up to the sky, maybe gazing upwards if it's comfortable on your neck. And when you're ready, we're gonna make our way shifting into a side plank. So you're gonna to begin to shift on the outside edge of the left foot, taking the right foot, stacking it on top, keeping that right arm reached up towards the sky and just hold here. In our vinyasa yoga, we use just a little bit more strength. So engaging into the core, if this feels good, you can always take an optional tree pose variation, bending the top knee. Or you could come into what I like to call star variation where you extend the right leg up into the sky. You're gonna find that adds just a little bit more power. And from wherever you are, making your way into a high plank, dropping the right hand to the ground. We're gonna make our way into our first vinyasa. Vinyasas are always optional. You can always go straight to downward dog, but if you would like to, we can take a chaturanga. So that's this push up motion, tucking uh, elbows in tight to the body. Making your way down, release the toes, pointing all 10 toenails into the mat and make your way into an upward facing dog or a cobra. Coming into this gentle back bend. And then just beginning to tuck the toes and make your way gracefully into your downward facing dog. And there are always lots of options to make your vinyasa a little bit more powerful or maybe a little bit more restorative. For example, keeping your thighs off of the mat, but pressing deeply into the tops of your feet. When you're in that upward facing dog or cobra can be a way to make it more powerful. And if you wanna make it a little more restorative, just coming onto the knees while you take your chaturanga push-up position can be a beautiful way of achieving that. So on the inhale, we're gonna reach the left leg up towards the sky. And on the exhale, thread the foot in between the hands for a little lunge, dropping the right knee. And reaching the hands up towards the sky. Sinking deeply into the left hip space. Making sure to knit the ribs, or in other ways, not flaring the ribs outwards, creating a nice straight spine. We're gonna make our way into our half splits. If it feels good, you can always take blocks to either side of you or fingertips to the earth, slowly straightening the front leg, shifting the hips back, pointing the left toes towards the sky and just folding forward with a straight spine. Again, just pulling the left hip back and the right hip forward in such a way that you're able to square the hips towards the front of the mat. And as you're ready, bending into that front knee, taking the hands to the inside of that left foot. And we're gonna shift the left foot to the outer edge of the mat. Then we're in our lizard pose here. So maybe if it feels good, option one, just staying right here, maybe rocking from side to side. This is beautiful hip opening. Option two, you could always take the forearms down to the earth. Again, just feeling a little bit more openness in the left hip space. Or option three, if you want to incorporate just a little bit of a um, stretch in the right quad, you can always lift the right foot off the mat, reach the left fingertips behind to grab hold of the right toes, and just gently pull the leg in towards you as you gaze upwards or towards the left side wall. Again, completely optional, just what feels good for you. And 
beautiful. If you did take the toes, releasing them to the mat, planting both hands back into the mat. Then we're gonna make our way into our easy twist. So coming up onto the ball of the right foot so that you lift the right knee, reaching the left arm up and towards the sky and gazing upwards. So really opening the torso to the left wall. I should have mentioned this on the other side. If you want to feel just a bit more opening through the left shoulder, you can always take a half bind. So that can mean taking that hand, that left hand that's in the air and bringing it behind the back. And then gazing upwards, it can just be a little bit nicer of an opening, totally optional. And if you did take the half bind, unbinding the arm, reaching it up, we're gonna make our way into our side plank. So shifting the weight onto the outer edge of the right foot, extending the left leg on top of it and reaching upwards. Again, same variations apply if you're interested. You can take a tree pose, bending the top leg, star pose, shooting the top leg upwards towards the sky as much feels good, or just a regular side plank pressing the hips away from the earth. And when you're ready, making your way back into your high plank, both palms pressing into the mat. Again, your optional vinyasa with whatever variations support you. So bending through the elbows, making your way to the ground, untucking the toes, pointing all 10 toenails into the mat, and shifting your way into a baby cobra or an upward facing dog. Baby cobra, you need, or your elbows might be a little bit bent. And upward facing dog, you might have your arms straight so that you can get a little bit more opening into the back space. And from here, tucking the toes, shifting the bottom up towards the sky, making your way into a downward facing dog. Now from your downward facing dog, gazing towards the front of your mat, step or float up to the front, come to a flat back. So maybe fingertips are on the floor, maybe the shins and fold all the way forward. Just letting the head drop. You can take a gentle bend in the knees if that supports you here. This is our Uttanasana, our forward fold. On the inhale, root down to rise up, extending the hands towards the sky. And exhale, take the hands through heart center. And we're in our mountain pose here. Just feeling the earth between all four corners of the feet, finding your balance. From here, I encourage you to take the toes or even just the knees to touch. We're gonna make our way into a chair pose. So on the inhale, shifting the weight back onto the heels. I like to graze my fingertips across the floor as I come into my chair pose, reaching the arms to either side of the ears. Really sitting the bottom back, but making sure you can still see the toes over the knees. And just holding this a really beautiful, powerful pose. If you're uncomfortable holding the hands to either side of the ears, you can always take the hands at heart center. It's a beautiful variation. And exhale, forward fold, straighten the legs, drop the head towards the earth. Inhale, coming onto the fingertips with a flat back and exhale, planting the palms, stepping or floating back into a high plank, optional vinyasa, chaturanga, upward facing dog or cobra, and downward facing dog, beautiful. So on the inhale, reaching the right leg up towards the sky, three leg dog. And on the exhale, threading the foot in between the hands, we're gonna come into a warrior one. So you're gonna spin the back left foot at a 45 degree angle. You're gonna bend deeply into that front right knee, 
Take the hands towards the sky. Stacking the right knee over the right ankle. And from here, you're gonna take the hands behind the back and maybe clasp the hands, interlacing the fingers. We're gonna come into a humble warrior here. So slowly beginning to shift the torso forwards. The right shoulder is gonna come into the inside of the right knee. And if it feels good, you'll just let those interlaced fingers and arms drop forwards, really creating a nice opening in the shoulder space. And on the inhale, making our way back up, reaching the arms up towards the sky. And on the exhale, taking the hands to either side of the right foot, stepping the right foot back, optional vinyasa, chaturanga. Upward facing dog or cobra. And downward facing dog. This time on the inhale, left leg comes up to the sky for a three leg dog. And on the exhale, thread the left foot in between the hands, spin the back right foot at a 45 degree angle, and reach the arms up towards the sky. Making sure you can still see those left toes, stacking the left knee over the left ankle. Again, I'll tell you to knit the ribs. So that just means I don't want you to flare the ribs outwards, creating a nice straight spine. Inhale deeply. And on the exhale, again, taking the hands behind the back, clasping the fingers. And we'll make our way into a humble warrior. So beginning to press the left shoulder to the inner edge of the left knee, allowing the hands to drop out in front of you. And on the inhale, make your way back up, unclasping the hands, reaching the hands towards the sky. And exhale, take the hands to either side of the left foot, step it back into a high plank, optional vinyasa. Chaturanga, upward facing dog or cobra, and downward facing dog. Now this time again on the inhale, reaching the right leg up, straightens the air for three leg dog. And on the exhale, thread the foot in between the hands, spinning the back foot at a 45 degree angle. We're gonna make our way into a warrior two. So the arms are gonna come out into a T. You're gonna be facing your torso towards really that left side wall, but you're gonna gaze over the right fingertips. Again, knees should be stacked over the ankle. Maybe take a shrug through the shoulders. On the inhale, dropping the left hand to the left thigh, reaching the right arm overhead, gazing upwards. Reverse warrior. Take an inhale and on the exhale, we make our way into an extended side angle pose. So dropping the right forearm to the right thigh. Reaching the left arm up overhead. Extended side angle. Keeping that deep bend in the knee. With that top arm, try to see if you can spiral it so that the pinky is pointing towards the floor. And on the inhale, make your way back into your warrior two, arms coming into a T, gazing over the right fingertips. Slowly begin to straighten the front right leg. We're gonna make our way into Trikonasana or triangle pose. So we're gonna reach forward, hinging from the hip creases, reaching as far as we can. And then let the fingertips drop either towards the floor, maybe onto your ankle, maybe onto a block and gaze upwards.
Again, you've got the torso pointed towards the left side wall. into a balancing half moon. So if you do have a block, a pillow, maybe a book, I encourage you to put it just a few inches in front of that right foot. And we're slowly gonna bend into the front knee. I'm gonna take the fingertips either to the ground, the block, and you're gonna begin to lift that back leg upwards. <laughs> Seeing how your balance is today. Gazing towards the left side wall, really opening up the hips to the left wall. And from wherever you are, gracefully dropping your weight back into your warrior two. Cartwheeling the hands to either side of the right foot, stepping it back. Optional vinyasa, chaturanga, upward dog or cobra, and downward facing dog. This time reaching the left leg up into the air for three leg dog. And threading the foot in between the hands, spinning the back foot at a 45 degree angle. Arms come out into a T, gazing over the right or the left fingertips. We're going to reverse our warrior, dropping the right hand to the right thigh, reaching the left arm overhead. And on the exhale, we're going to make our way into extended side angle pose. So dropping the left forearm to the left thigh, reaching the right arm overhead, spiraling the pinky towards the floor. Maybe gazing upwards if it's comfortable on your neck. On the inhale, making your way back into your warrior two, gazing over the left fingertips, arms back into a T. We're slowly going to begin to straighten the front left leg. When it's straightened, we're going to pull the left hand forward, hinging from the hip creases as much as we can. Then gently letting the fingertips drop to a block, to the floor, or maybe to the ankle. Reaching the right arm overhead, gazing upwards if it's comfortable on your neck. Trikonasana, triangle pose. Now we're going to come into our balancing half moon again, this time on the left leg. So maybe taking a block or a book a few inches in front of you. Or maybe just bring the fingertips themselves a few inches in front of you. We're slowly going to bend into the front knee. See how it feels to lift the right leg up towards the sky. Maybe you can take the gaze up with it. Or maybe not finding what we call our drishti, so this unmoving focal point that helps you balance yourself here. Inhale deeply, and on the exhale, release gracefully back into your warrior two, gazing over the left fingertips. And on the exhale, cartwheel the hands to either side of the left foot, step it back, high plank, optional vinyasa. Chaturanga, upward facing dog for cobra, and downward facing dog. Now from your downward facing dog, just dropping the knees to the floor and bringing the bottom towards the heels, make your way into a child's pose. You can either extend your hands out in front of you or just bring them to the sides for something a little bit more restorative.
On the inhale, gently begin to lift the chest up one vertebrae at a time and extend the legs out in front of you. We're gonna come into a Paschimottanasana or our forward fold, reaching the arms up. And on the exhale, hinging from the hip creases, folding forward into your forward fold. And really what matters most to me is not so much that you can, you know, touch your toes or that you can bring the forehead to the knees. Really, I just want you to focus on bringing the belly to the thighs because that's really gonna mean that you're lengthening through the spine. In any forward fold, you can always prop the blocks or maybe folks underneath the bottom that allows you to just get a little bit better at hinge from the hip creases to fold forward. And on the exhale, bring the chest upwards. Gonna make our way into a half cow, half cow face pose or shoelace pose, as it might be called in yin. So all you're gonna do is you're going to bend the right knee, bring it across the body, and then bend the left knee so that you're stacking both of the knees on top of one another, and the soles of the feet are really close to either side of the hips. I guess I can move myself forward so it's a little easier to see. There we go. We're going to fold forward. So if it feels good for you, you can just fold forward like this. I'm going to take an eagle arm variation because I like the opening sensation of my shoulder blades as well. That means I'm going to take my hands into a cactus. I'm going to bring the right arm underneath the left, binding it once, and then maybe binding it again, taking the palms to touch and folding forwards. Really just deeply melting into the mat. And making sure that in your shoelace pose, you've got both sit bones rooted into the earth. If you find one side popping up off the ground, just press into it a little bit more. And on the inhale, rise up. If you took eagle arms, unclasping the arms, and we're just going to switch to cross the legs. So this time, right leg crosses underneath leg, uh, left leg crosses on top. Again, you've got the heels or just the feet in general on the sides towards the hips. And this time, we're going to take the left arm underneath. Yeah, left arm underneath the right arm if you're taking the eagle arm variation. And then if you can bind the arms again, taking the palms to touch. If you cannot, that is totally all right. Just taking one bind is just as good. On the inhale, lengthen through the spine and on the exhale, fold forward. On the inhale, peel the body up towards, and then uncross the arms, uncross the legs, bring them out in front of you. And we're just gonna make our way with our back onto the mat. So taking the hands out in front and just slowly lowering the back down to the earth, letting it drop. 
just hug the knees in towards the body, maybe rock from side to side, giving the back a little bit of a massage. We're gonna take just a really brief spinal twist just to neutralize the spine from any of the work that we did today. So letting both the knees press over to the right side of the mat, reaching the arms into either a cactus or out into a T if you have space and gazing towards the left side wall. If you want to make your spinal twist just a little bit more intense, you can always cross the bottom right leg on top of the left. It's going to just twist you a little bit deeper. And on the inhale, bring in the knees back through center. Like I said, really brief. And we're going to take the knees and let them drop over to the left side of the mat. Again, feeling free to cross the top leg or the, or the bottom leg over the top. So the left leg over the right and gazing towards the right side wall. If you'd like to deepen your twist. And on the inhale, taking the knees back through center and just giving them a nice gentle hug. Now at this point, I have run a little bit over the 45 minutes I intended. I sincerely apologize. If you do need to move on, you can absolutely go. Otherwise, for the rest of us, I really encourage you, if you have time, just to take a Shavasana. So that's going to mean extending the legs out in front of you, taking the arms to the sides, palms facing upwards, and just beginning to close the eyes. Our Shavasana is so important. It's our almost just a bit of a meditative state where we allow the body and the mind just to really process and absorb the work that we did in the practice. We just allow the, the breath and all the thoughts to gently release. Bring yourself into this really blissful state, quiet mind, quiet body, Shavasana. And if you're ready, feeling free to stay in your Shavasana as long as you'd like, but if you're feeling a little bit ready, maybe just bring just a bit of gentle movement into the fingers and the toes. Maybe taking a stretch overhead, feeling this lengthy stretch through the entire body. Maybe dropping over to the right or the left side of the mat. Slowly making your way up into a seat. Again, knowing that if you want to stay in your Shavasana, please, by all means, stay. But for the rest of us, if you are in your seat, maybe taking the hands either to heart center or one hand on top of the other of the chest. Light 
in me recognizes, honors, and loves the light in you. Namaste, yogis. Thank you guys so much for coming. Thank you for putting up with a little bit of a tech issue on my side. I'm glad that the headphones stayed on during the practice, but otherwise I hope that you have a lovely day, a lovely afternoon, and a lovely week. I hope to see you next week. Thanks, Marisol. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Thanks, Jacqueline. Thanks, Camille. <laughs> Thank you, Nadia. Thank you, Ellen.